Yeah, well, it's like taking care of a cat, you know, pop down, bit of food, set a reminder in January, not really much hassle. And he doesn't mix his mysterious quasi-military stuff with talking about movies and that on the internet, you know? I never dared ask. Anyway, let's be off. All right. See you later, Ken's. Right, let's get this all started then. Okay, so we've got it figured out then. I am amenable to this arrangement. Well, cheers, free. And now we wait for this universe's funky. That third margarita was a mistake. Oh, hey guys. Not I in the chair, are you? We have an agreement. I know, I know, I know. I'm kidding, I'm kidding with you, I'm messing with you. I see you there rolling your eyes, Mr. So called Funky M. Meh. Hang on, phone call. Oh, it's from Boss. How do, Bossy? How do, Funkers? I'm gathering a few interested parties. What's the uh, mission? Well, we've been doing MCU phases two and three, and you can tell where that leads. Yeah, in Finzy Gems and all that. By the by, how many of you are there now? I'm up to three so far. Me, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend, and uh, the multi-sighted adventurer, Mr. Funky M. I think that there might be a girl me, but I haven't looked too closely into that one. Oh, there's the one now. I'll get me intranet sorted and see you in a few. I remain your avowed associate host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And I'm Funky M, multi-sighted adventurer and all-around decent kind of guy. Well, I'll do a follow of that. Anyway, I'm Boz. And I go by Cactus. Welcome, one and all, to this marvellous legend. So we come to it at last, the moment that the Mad Titan finally begins his grand scheme. And it's gonna take more than a broken team of scattered Avengers. More than thunder and magic. Perhaps more than anyone can even imagine if they're gonna put a stop to his plans. If they even can. The end begins here with Avengers Infinity War. And while I usually get one of the guests to read off the introduction, I'm feeling saucy, so I'll do it myself. Released in 2018, Marvel's Avengers Infinity War is the first in a two-part mega-crossover that resolves the main plotline that's been running through the MCU since the first Avengers movie. Thanos of Titan feels the need to balance the universe, but his preferred method is killing half of it. This is a grand spectacle, and it certainly played well with audiences and critics. So without further ado... I give you the seventh Marvelous Legend, and the first part in our two-part finale, Avengers Infinity War. And it's out of the frying pan and into the fire for Thor. And if you'd care to elaborate for those who weren't paying attention, Mr. Cactus? Well, in short, uh, Ragnarok ended with, well, Ragnarok, uh, Surtur destroying Asgard, and all of the refugees aboard a transport ship. But, oh dear, in the tag, the shadow of a much larger craft loomed. Which, by the looks of it, weren't all that friendly. Loki continues being Loki, allowing Hulk to be a Hulk. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. Which is, of course, terribly. It's a bad sign if the Hulk can't beat him. And two stones down as Thanos adds the Space Stone to his gauntlet. 
and Loki's last gambit predictably fails, leaving Thor adrift in space. Crashing to Earth, Dr. Banner has a grim warning. And all of this before the opening titles. Cut to another 12% of a moment. Gooseburied by Doctor Strange. And a quick reminder for the folks in the back. There are six Infinity Gems. The Gem of Time, the Gem of Space, the Gem of the Mind, the Gem of the Soul, the Gem of Power, and the Gem of Reality. Alone, any single Infinity Gem is a powerful weapon in its own right. And if more than one were combined, their might could work wonders, or wreak horrors. And it is no secret that Thanos seeks to wield the six Infinity Gems entire. And he's coming to Earth for two of them, while Bruce is having a problem becoming the Hulk. Into your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. Doctor Strange is captured, Spider-Man is beamed up, and Iron Man boards the ship of Thanos. So why are we cutting to the Guardians of the Galaxy? Fate brings us here to discover an undying Thor, of whom is in great need of a worthy weapon. So Thor takes Rocket and Groot and heads over to the Forge of Nadavlia, and we catch up with the Mind Stone and the guy it's hanging out on which is bad news when the Thanos goons show up. But here comes the cavalry. For the record, he wrote that one, not me. Back with Team Star-Lord, Gamora has a favour to ask. And on to nowhere, to face down Thanos. Which goes about as well as you expect, because he already had the stone. And Gamora holds him to his promise. For all the good that it does her. Three stones down. Back on Earth, the remaining Avengers catch up on the situation and discuss strategy. Their strategy shall lead them to the nation of Wakanda. Hold on there, my fellow. You've skipped a mouthful. It is only decided to go to Wakanda because the only other option is destroying the Mind Stone and Vision along with it. This, of course, is not a sane option. Therefore, our heroes take the step of removing the stone from Vision, leaving him intact. But Doctor Strange still has the Time Stone, for now. Witness now the mind of a maniac, and the price of a lie that protected the universe. Nebula and Gamora, sisters in battle. And it is in the capture and torture of Nebula that she revealed the truth, the location of the Infinity Gem of the Soul. Stick a pin in that, though, because it's time for Thor to get tooled up. Hey, Funkers, have you got one of those micro thingies for me? Well, I did whip one up a while back, but I don't know that you'll like it. Well, whack it up on screen, then. Can't be that bad. Now then, to get his new hammer, our lad's got to relight the Forge of Nidavellir which has gone dark after making that lovely gauntlet what Thanos wears. Mind, that's only because he threatened to kill them if they didn't, and he still killed them all after they did. That Thanos is an honourless... blighter. And, after a brief interlude on Titan... Comes the hour that shall mark the ending of Gamora. For you see, dear viewer, it is the fate of the Red Skull that was ejected unto the world of Vormir by the Tesseract itself to deliver those who seek the gem of the soul unto its truth, that a soul must be sacrificed in order to take possession of a gem of the soul. So it's bye-bye Gamora, and four stones down. Back on Earth, the nation of Wakanda prepares for war. While Thor fires up the forges of Nidavellir. But it's easier said than done when the focusing ring breaks, so Thor holds it open. Bare handed and all. Which is just as well, 
because his new hammers needed in Wakanda. Meanwhile, Thanos returns to Titan to collect the Time Stone, which would finally have been his downfall if it wasn't for this impulsive half-human. Okay, so this, this thing right here, if someone, if anyone had taught Peter Quill, the Star-Lord, to be able to handle his emotions in a healthy and positive way, he never would have reacted like this, the snap never would have gone down, and we'd all have been a whole lot happier. So I just want to put it on record that everything, every last single damn thing that happens from here on out, is 100% the fault of the Star-Lord and his inability to chill for five freaking seconds. Just wanted to put that out there, that's all. Did he just... Yeah, I saw it. I'm sure there's a reason. And we return to Earth to witness the Scarlet Witch ascend the field of battle. Which was all the distraction that the sneaky blighters needed. It's a pitched battle to protect that stone. And it's a personal one for Tony Stark. But Doctor Strange isn't made of stone. Five down, one to go. So it's time for the final round. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. And even as the Scarlet Witch destroys the gem, its sibling betrays us all. Six and out. But here comes Thor at the last minute. Oh, I knew that he'd come through for us. Or not? No! Nez! They can't do that! Wait a minute. Where's your aura? Are you... were you... No, no, you're still here, but... not! Witness then defeat, as fully half of the living universe is... removed. And that, folks, was how they left it for an entire year. But I'll spare you the rant, because we've already had one. So then, that was Infinity War, and... Incoming transmission from the Dragonfly. Hmm, I'll put it up. Ah, got it noch rechtzeitig. Uh, hey yo, can y'all see me? Oh, is the camera broken again? Yes, we can see you, Cal. But we can't see your first officer. Normally, my wonderful, talented, beautiful, and hypnotizing XO, the brilliant lady, Agatha Rat Silver Sinclair, is sitting right next to me, but today she's on an away mission. However, she will be with us in spirit and via communicator. Ah, fair enough then. So, just to remind you, the topic is Avengers Infinity War. Care to share your thoughts? Oh, yeah, we have to say things about that. First of all, I concur with you, Magister Defunk. The ending is bad. In a good way, but bad. Like the best worst cliffhangers of TNG. There are scenes where I had Agatha sat on the bridge and not only we were screaming and shouting curses at the movie. That being said, I gotta say one thing concerning Thanos. Everyone keeps calling him the Mad Titan. And in the end, this name is quite correct, although it's just a... Uh... And I stand by that. I mean, he does the, oh, the universe doesn't have enough resources to sustain all the people living there. Besides that, I come to the conclusion that Infinity War is a good flick in and on itself. I just hope that Edgam will be able to stop this. I mean, it would be a shame if the setup would be good, but the payoff wouldn't. But what does our host think of it? This is the big one. All of the MCU to date all tied up in this ginormous battle to stop half the universe from being wiped out. And then it happens anyway, which all comes down in my mind to Star-Lord not handling himself. But if I get into that, it's going to be bleeps all the way. Which I suppose speaks to the performances, which is suitably naturalistic, even if the comedic awkwardness of the Guardians, and the generational clashing between Peter and Tony does rather imbalance the tone. Which is the big problem with smashing the entire MCU together for one ginormous season finale. So many different genres, so many different emotions, all for the spectacle. And there's plenty of spectacle to spare. Weapons forged with the heat of a star, multitudes of slavering beasts as they swarm the Wakandan forces, 
the light show of the Infinity Stones themselves. But because of the writing, performances and direction, it's more than just empty spectacle. And all the way up to the ending, you keep expecting that miracle to happen, for someone, anyone to do something to stop him, for the plan to work, and for Thanos to be defeated, and the universe saved. But ultimately it never happens. This was how it was meant to go. That they finally met someone that they couldn't beat, that the odds couldn't overcome, and a defeat so large that it echoed across the entire universe. But this is only half of a movie, and I can't put half a movie into my house of love. Not without the other half. So then, if you'll excuse me, I've got to shore up my existence while I still can. I've been Funky Monkey, and these good people have been my co-hosts. Boz and Cactus of Boz Radio. Tune in any time for the best music from the 60s onwards or 8pm CET, Monday to Wednesday, Friday and Saturday for live DJs playing your requests and anything that catches their eye. Captain Kevin Cat And Lady Wet Agatha St. Clair Silver Not really a reviewer, but we're having fun being included. May you all live long and prosper. And I'll take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for dropping by. To my audience, join me next week for the rest of the story. So long, folks. Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Blah blah crowdfunding. Oh, we have a Discord. You should totally check it out. I'll link it below. Take not my words as obligation, however. Merely suggestion. Good day! <laughs>